These are the best Confluence handy macros to use whenever you're managing projects and collaborating with your team. We'll divide these macros into three categories, managing project information, using pages, and viewing attachments. To try out how these macros are used, I encourage you to create your free account with Confluence so it's your personal sandbox and you can sign up using my link in the description bar down below. First, let's talk about how macros are used to manage your project information. Macro number one is action items. When you're leading your team discussions, you need to assign tasks to your team, right? When you're inside a page inside of Confluence, you can create a list of action items by using the action items macro. Type the forward slash key and then the word for action item. Click it and you should see an open check mark box. Let's say that our action item is to place a purchase order with our supplier. You can assign a person to that action item by using the at symbol and then insert the assigned date by using the date macro, which will pull up a calendar and you can pick the date that is due by. The action items macro that I found is extremely handy to use when you're documenting your meeting minutes because it will generate a list of action items that you can refer back to in the future. Macro number two is the status macro. Let's say that you have a page that shows an overview of all the projects you're leading. You can have a status column and add the status of each project by using the status macro. In our example, let's add the status macro and then you'll see a pop-up appear where you can set the color of it and the title of its status. For our first project, let's say that it's on track with a green color indicator. For our second project, let's say that it's at risk with an orange color indicator. And for our third project, let's say that it's off track with a red color. Now macro number three is the roadmap planner macro. This is one of my favorite macros because you can quickly create a high level timeline in a matter of minutes inside one of your pages and you don't need to use another software to do it. Type the forward slash key and the word for roadmap and you should see this pop-up appear. We can rename each swim lane so that the first lane is for project A and the second lane is for project B. To do that, left click the swim lane and click on the pencil icon to rename its title. Let's do that for the two swim lanes and you'll see the names change appropriately. Let's rearrange each of the bars so they occur one after the other along our timeline. And we can also resize each of them as we need to so that they reflect the correct duration. For the purpose of this video, let's say that bar one is called design, bar two is testing, and bar three is analysis. For our second swim lane, let's say that we just started this project and we're still in initiation phase. To add a bar, left click on the swim lane and click on the plus symbol. Type in the words for initiation and you're pretty much all set. Now you can repeat this as many times as you need to to create all the high level milestones for your projects in less than a few minutes. Super helpful, especially if you're creating a roadmap that shows when certain features or milestones will be hit. Now when you click on the close button, your roadmap will appear on the page itself. By the way, if you're getting value out of this video so far, don't forget to smash that like button to show me you your support. So let's now dive into our second group of macros used to manage and create our pages. Macro number one is adding different types of panel macros to highlight information to your team. When you type the forward slash key and the word panel, we have six different types of panels that we can create. Info, notes, error, a custom panel, success, and warning panels. Let me go ahead and add all these types of panels to this page. I'll go ahead and I'll also add in text to each of them so you can see what it looks like and how it's used. So in general, each panel helps information just stand out and pop in a page so that you or your team member knows where to focus their attention on. For example, if it's a warning panel, you can use it as a cautionary note to tell people to be on the lookout for certain elements when they're reviewing the document. Macro number two is for adding a table to showcase data and then using the built-in feature to add a chart. In our page, let me use a table macro to add a table right here. 
Let me populate it with data that shows how many units of a specific product, either product one or product two, were sold for the first three months in the quarter. With our table populated with data, we can quickly add a chart just by clicking on the insert chart button in the pop-up toolbar. When you do that, you'll see a chart automatically appear right beneath it. And you can also customize it by clicking on the chart options. We can change the chart from bar to line to pie. So we have a couple options depending on how we want to display our data. Let's customize the title of our chart by clicking on the customize header. Underneath the section for title, let's call our graph products sold in Q1 2024. And when we exit right out of it, our chart has been updated. It's super friendly and it's very easy to use if you need to create simple charts to showcase your data. By the way, if you like my free guide to master how to use Confluence the easy way, you can download it completely completely for free at alvinthepm.com forward slash tutorial guide. Macro number three is a table of contents macro. If your page has a lot of content inside, you can make it very easy to navigate by formatting the titles of each section with headers as I'm showing on this screen. After you do that, in the beginning of your document, type the forward slash key and then the word for T-O-C. And you should see the table of contents macro. Click it and you'll see the table of contents automatically generate based on the headers that you created. What's great about this feature is that it's clickable and it will automatically take you to the section that you click on. Macro number four is a change history macro. If your team has been working on editing a document over multiple rounds of revisions, this macro will be your best friend. Let's insert a change history macro into our page. And what we're going to see is a table populated with the different revisions that we have created and updated over time. Let's click on an older revision and you'll see that this is what the page looked like before we made any future changes. What's great about this macro is that we can compare it to the current version and see what changed. In the top right section, it says that anything that has been added is highlighted in green. Anything in red was removed and anything in blue had formatting changed. So in our example, we can see that quite a few things have been added to this page since the original revision. This can be extremely helpful if you're not sure what changed recently and you need to check back on the previous versions of your document. Now, before we move on to our next category of macros, make sure to smash that like button because it shows me your support and keeps me inspired to create high quality content just like this. Our third category of macros is viewing and accessing documents in your page. What's great about Confluence is that you can directly show PDF files and Microsoft Office documents from PowerPoint, Excel, and Word. Just type the forward slash key followed by the word office and you'll see the macros for each software. Or you can type in PDF and you'll see the PDF macro. But before we can view the documents on our page, we need to add the file onto our page. So to do that, we have to use the macro for inserting an image, video, or file. So type the forward slash key and then the word for image and it should pop up. Click on it and then you'll see this window appear where you can pick the document to upload it into the Confluence page. Let's go ahead and let's pick our sample project plan word file and click upload. After the file has been uploaded, the file will show as an icon on your screen. Now to make it even more interactive so you can actually scroll through it on your Confluence page, you need to use the Office Word macro. So let's type the forward slash key followed by Word and we'll see this screen right here. On the left hand side, we can see that our Word file has automatically been selected. Let's leave the field for page name blank since we're using the current page to show the Word file and then click on save. You'll see your Word file in a preview section box, but you won't be able to scroll through it. To do that, you need to exit out of edit mode. Let's click on the blue update button at the top right area of your screen. When we scroll to the very bottom of the page, we can view the Word file and scroll through it. You can zoom in to see the document more easily, or you can even click on start presentation, so the document takes up the entire screen. That's super helpful if you only want to view the document in Confluence and you don't necessarily want to open up the app. Keep in mind that you can do the same exact thing with our other files for PDF documents, PowerPoint slides, and Excel files. Just use the Office PowerPoint, Office Excel macro, 
or even the PDF macro and repeat this entire process. For our next Confluence macro, this is where you come in. Which macro do you use that has been super helpful for you that I didn't include in this video? Drop me a comment down below because I would love to hear from you and also so we can help each other win with our community. While it's important to know how to use macros, it's even more important to know how to use Confluence effectively. Please watch this video next to learn how to use Confluence from start to finish and I'll see you in the next video.